Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another pre-conference interview for TESOL Canada 2015. My name is Chris Wharton. I'm conference co-chair along with Glenn Cochran. And today, we're very fortunate to have one of our keynotes, uh, Diane Larson Freeman from the University of Michigan joining us. Hi, Diane. Hi, Chris and everyone. Good morning. Well, hello. I don't know what time you'll be viewing this. That's right. That's right. It is morning here in, in reality. But um, um, so, Diane, we are very fortunate to have you as one of our keynotes on uh, Saturday. And also um, for the Thursday pre-conference symposia, you are giving a symposium as well. So can you tell us a little bit about both of those? Yeah, I'd like to. I, I feel they're related. And they're also related to your theme. The theme of TESOL Canada this year, as I understand it, is elevating language learning to new heights. And what I try to do as a speaker is somehow connect my, what I want to say to your theme, uh, at least uh, in terms of how it stimulates my thinking. And so I've decided to speak on scaling the heights for my keynote. Uh, and so my title is Scaling the Heights of Language, Its Learning, and Its Teaching. Now, scaling, I've chosen scaling because it's actually got, oh, actually it's got a lot of meanings. I checked with a dictionary last night, an online dictionary, but I chose it for two of its meanings. One, scaling, as in scaling the mountains, can mean climb, of course, and it seemed to fit very well with the thing of this the wonderful setting of this year's conference. But it also, scaling can also mean to make something proportionate, according to scale. And I'm going to propose that mountain ranges and languages both scale as fractals. A fractal is a geometric image that is self-similar at all levels of scale. So one of the images that one of the examples that's helpful for understanding this image of a fractal is broccoli. And broccoli has a bushy top and a stalk. And if you break off a branch from that bush, you get, again, a bushy top and a stalk. And you can go all the way down to a little tiny piece of broccoli. I don't even know what you call it, a floweret, perhaps, where you get a bushy mm -hmm. top and a stalk. And so that's a fractal. Different levels of scale, you have self-similarity. Not identity, but self-similarity. Now, for my Thursday workshop, I'm going to suggest we can use that metaphor of language as a fractal to understand grammar, because we can use the same kind of analysis at different levels of scale for understanding grammar. In particular, I talk about the form and the meaning and the use of the different levels of grammar. So we're going to apply that metric for meaning and use to show that they apply at all levels of scale for grammar of for all of language. But in my keynote, I'm not going to limit it to grammar. I'm going to argue that there's a fractal nature to language. It's a natural phenomenon, just as a mountain range is a natural phenomenon. And I find that fascinating. And I'll give some examples for why that is the case. I mean, I'll argue the case that language is a fractal. Um, and if we understand that, Chris, then it has implications for the way languages are learned, languages are taught, languages are used. Now, fractals emerge from a dynamic process. They emerge, sorry, I just lost the picture. They emerge um, through usage, through usage that gives rise to patterns in language that are recurrent. So we use language, certain patterns are used frequently, and it's those that form the structure, shall we say, for the fractal nature of language. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of probably new language and perhaps some new thoughts your way, but I'll try to explain that in the hour that I have on Saturday. And beyond that, it seems to me, if we understand and if you accept my persuasive argument that language is a fractal, then it has implications for what we do in the classroom. How do we facilitate its acquisition if it's in fact, or its development, as the time is just going off, if we, um, if we understand it's a fractal? And I'm going to suggest 
that we can facilitate language, the development of language in our students through the processes of iteration and adaptation. And that's quite a mouthful, but to try to reassure your listeners or your conference, but prospective conference attendees, let me say that I always start with some kind of theoretical perspective, and I will this time, drawing on what I'm very inclined to these days, complexity theory. And fractals are images that connect to complexity theory. And so I'm going to use complexity theory as my backdrop to then connect um, my academic talk with, um, with this theory of complex dynamic systems. I'll stop there, and I'm happy to <laughs> clarify if you'd like me to, or I could go on and on and on for a long time on this topic. What right. No, that sounds great. It's the the purpose is just to kind of give the audience a you know a, it's kind of like a teaser, right? Like a, a for the movie that's about to come. So your right, Thursday right. talk will be fantastic. Sorry, go ahead. And I don't want to give my whole talk. If I give my whole talk now, no, you maybe no. will uninvite me. So I want to hold it. <laughs> but let me say maybe one right, other right. thing. If it's if it's to tease people, let me say one other thing if I might which is that okay. I, and of course this is a gross stereotype, but I think like me, Canadians are very appreciative of nature. And one of the reasons I like complexity theory is because there's a great deal of resonance uh, with nature. I mean, again, my example is of a mountain range of a head of broccoli suggest that it is in fact an ecological theory. And so that is one of the reasons I wanted to speak about fractals. Fractals are also mesmerizing. Uh, if, you, if you've seen them or type into Google fractals, you'll see these incredible computer-generated images um, that are just, just as I say, mesmerizing. They're beautiful. So I find the theory and the idea of fractals to be especially pleasing as well. Excellent, excellent. So your, your Thursday symposia, uh, symposium is, um, I believe, three hours. So you're going to really get into... Uh, a lot of different things, I'm sure. And then the keynote, uh, like you said, is is one hour where you're gonna you're gonna persuade the audience uh, of a lot of what you were just talking about. So that'll be great. Hopefully, people can see both. Try to. Um, yeah, hopefully they'll see both. But if not, I mean, one uh, at least the the keynote for sure. But the Thursday uh, symposium sounds fascinating as well. Um, just before we uh, sign off, Diane, have you had a chance to look at the program? And is there any uh, presentations that you hope to catch? Yeah. Yes, I've written them down. You know, when I go to conferences such as TESOL Canada, these provide professional development opportunities for me, of course, as well. And so I've just mm -hmm. skimmed some titles. I haven't done the full analysis yet, Chris, but um, I, I noted there was a lot on technology, a great deal, and it probably wouldn't hurt me to take in some of those sessions. But I'm a grammar file, mm -hmm. so I looked and saw prepositions, and a session on prepositions and a session on the applications of systemic functional grammar. I'd probably try to take those in. I, I did, oh, and the one on transfer appropriate processing, because I believe that's the way to teach grammar. I'll talk about that on my symposium on Thursday. There were a couple of phrases that caught my attention. Somebody was going to speak on generative dialogue. That sounded interesting to me. And then another mm -hmm. person was speaking on understanding culture as a complex dynamic system. And that certainly, uh, of course, has meaning for me because, as I said a few minutes ago, um, I think in terms of complex dynamic systems all the time. I think I would probably, oh, and I, the other thing that caught my attention is lightning talks. I've never seen a lightning talk before. That must be an innovation Tesla Canada has used or if, if others have, I've not seen it. So a 400 second talk, I think it is, I'm gonna have to try to catch one of those. Um, For sure. But I also thought I would go, as I often do, I would attend sessions of people I know and trust and know will provide a great talk. And, you know, so I'm looking at nothing more practical than a good, than good research. Lila Ranta and some of her colleagues at the University of Alberta, I'll probably try to catch that. Hedy McGarrell from Brock University always does a good job, and she's going to be talking about uh, corpus-based findings. I'll probably go there. 
This is assuming that they don't conflict, and I know that's always the challenge of concurrent sessions. Jane Willis, of course, right. will be talking about task-based um, work, and that's that's likely to be very, very good. And I saw Glenn Coffin and the group were doing things on promising practices for distributed learning in English language learning. I thought I might try to catch that. So some of these I may go to, some of them I may not. But those were some of the things that that popped out at me, popped out at me, that was put <laughs> out for me. <laughs> Right. Be Excellent. When you talk about language and grammar, <laughs> right? <laughs> that I'll try to catch, and as I say, will will contribute to my own professional development. Excellent. Well, like you say, I mean, uh, if you do need a break, that you're surrounded by our our lovely nature there in Lake Louise. So I think you'll be happy no matter what. I'm a little concerned about that. I hope people don't. Uh, I hope people come inside, Chris. What do you think? Well, we're painting all the windows black. <laughs> is that a is that a good idea? Yeah. Good. That that. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I've been there before many many years ago, and it is stunningly beautiful. Oh, it is, and you're right on the lake. So yeah, uh, we're going to be competing with the nature, I'm sure. But hopefully, we have such a great lineup. We don't. We're not worried. Yeah. I'm not either. So, Diane, uh, I just want to say thank you again uh, for doing this and taking the time out and, and coming to the conference and being such a, you know, uh, an involved participant. That's great. We're looking forward to seeing you in Lake Louise. Thank you. I'm looking forward to being there. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Great. Thank you.